Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have some Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs for you. In my last video from last week, my thrift flip uh, video, you guys gave me an idea and I wanted to show you how to make an item that some of you might not be able to find in thrift stores. So with all that being said, let's jump into today's DIY. Okay friends, so last week's video was such a hit and I know that not a lot of you can find a washboard at a thrift store, so I'm going to show you how easy it is to make one. So I start off with four of these galvanized signs from Dollar Tree. I take the tag off as well as those plaques. Now I do know that they have them without the little plaques in the front, but I have a ton of these so I wanted to use them up. So once I had all the stuff off of them, then I take a piece of foam board and I glue all four down to the foam board, two at the bottom and two at the top. Next, I just take my utility knife and I cut that foam board, the excess, away from the galvanized piece. Now to cover up those holes that we just took the plaque away from and took the tag off, I take my lightweight spackling and a spatula and I just fill in those holes as best as I can. Once I had the holes filled in and it dried, then I go in with my sterling silver acrylic paint and I just fill in those white spots that I just spackled. Now you can find these in my Amazon store in the link tree in my description box. That is where all of my links are going to be from now on. Chalk Couture, anything that I mention as far as a link will be in that link tree link uh, and I will leave it towards the top. But I do just take my 3 8 inch square dowel. I measure out three pieces for the bot or like a piece for the top and the bottom and then an extra piece that same size as well as two longer pieces for the sides and in a minute you'll see why I do this but I then just take it to my little mini miter saw and I cut them down when I did the giveaway I ended up buying one um my saw wasn't working at the time, so I used the one for the giveaway, and then I had to go back out and buy a new one, so I just kept it um, in my stash, and then, of course, my one that I've used all this time, the yellow one, still was not working correctly, so I guess everything happens for a reason, um, but I also did cut down two pieces of poplar, 23 inches each, which... I would cut them more like 27 or 28 inches each. I cut them way too short and then I had already painted them and I didn't want to waste them. So I did just go with it. Um, if you want the bottom piece a little bit longer then like I said, cut them down a little bit longer. But I did just show you the faux stain that I just made. I took some truffle Waverly chalk paint. I also took a dab of the ink Waverly chalk paint and some water and I stirred that up and then painted my dowels and my poplar. Um, it dries really quickly and I can glue like directly after using it because it dries so quickly and that is what I love the most. And then once I had all of those dried, then I do just go in with some hot glue and I glue all of my pieces down and you can see here why I cut an extra piece um, and then I just glue that all together like this. Now, if I'm not making much sense, um, I didn't want to try to explain it because sometimes um, it doesn't come out right, but you can see what I'm doing here. And then once I had the galvanized piece framed out, then I put a dab of hot or 
a string of hot glue I should say and I go down the side of this piece and then I glue down that piece of poplar and just to reinforce it I put a bead of hot glue down the back I then take my roller and just basically measure like where it's sitting on my piece of poplar and then I make a mark all the way down my poplar and then make a line that way when I go to glue the other side down I have it glued down nice and evenly so that it doesn't look funky and like off centered or anything like that then I just go in with my hot glue and I glue that down. I then take two packs of large stir sticks. Actually, I believe I this is three packs. And I flip my sign or my washboard over and I just kind of lay out my stir sticks to see how many I need to cut down. And all together I cut eight, but I only ended up needing seven. So I measured out where I needed to cut them and then I go to my saw, cut them down and give them a distress coat of my white Waverly chocolate paint. Originally, I was not going to put a shelf on my washboard, and then when I pulled out my saw, I seen this piece that has been there since I had my shed, so I just cut that down to size, stained it with that same stain that I used, or my homemade stain, I should say, and then I just glued that down to the bottom of where the galvanized piece is, and then I went in and I glued the rest of the pieces down. Now you guys already know what step is next. I go in with my little mini chip brush and some antique wax by Waverly. Now I know that Walmart is not carrying Waverly in some stores. I went last night, my store still has it. I asked the manager and they said they have no plans on getting rid of the Waverly anytime soon because I was definitely going to stock up but it seems that my store is still going to carry it but I then just take three hooks that I had in my stash and I measure out to make sure that these are nice and evenly spaced out and then I take my drill and I screw those hooks down to the bottom. Because I used a shorter screw than what came with these hooks, I did have to go in with some ink where really chalk paint and give those three good coats to cover up that silver. I wanted to use a different screw because these stir sticks are pretty thin. I mean, they're pretty thick as well, if you think about it, but as far as screwing hooks down to it, the screws were... Um, too long so I did just go in with shorter screws and that is why I had to paint them but once I had my hooks um, painted then I do go in with my chalk couture transfers and I spell out the word wash now I know on the previous washboard that I did last DIY video um, I did something a little bit different but for this one um, I didn't want it to look the exact same just to show you that you do have options, you can do it any which way you like, and I figured that the word wash would be perfect on here, and like I said in the beginning, I will leave all the materials that I used as far as chalk couture in my link tree link in the description box. 
I also wanted to mention that I did use black paste, obviously, and I just kind of lightly squeegeed over the paste over the transfers to give it that distressed look. And look how amazing this turned out, you guys. I love it so, so much. And I know you'll let me know in the comments down below, per usual, which do you like better? Do you like the one that I did last week or do you like this one better? I know that everybody has their own personal preference. I personally love both of them very, very much, but I think that it's just so amazing that you can make things like this from Dollar Tree items. So if you're new here, my name's Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty. I'm starting to do more Dollar Tree hauls. So if that's something that interests you, I would love if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button. That way you don't miss another Dollar Tree moment. You also want to you also want to tap the bell and all. That way you're notified every single time I upload. I'm starting to do giveaways every other week on this channel and many, many fun things to come. So I would love to have you a part of my crafty family. Each week on my channel, I show you guys my earrings of the week. I thought that that would be a fun little different thing to do. Um, so for this week's earrings of the week, there are these little gray, kind of like macrame. They're so pretty. Um, I wear a lot of gray and black. I just love that. <laughs> That's just me, you guys. Um, and I love Walmart earrings. So they're gray and they're from Walmart. Win-win, right? So if you want to send me a pair of earrings to feature on the earrings of the week, my P.O. Box information is down in the description box and I will give you a shout out. I appreciate you guys and love you guys so much. And with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Okay friends, moving on to the next project which I know you guys are going to absolutely love and adore. So I take 12 of these boxes from Dollar Tree and I have noticed that if you get the same exact little cutout on the front, um, I went through all of them. It seems that this butterfly um, pattern boxes are the best shaped ones if you know anything about these boxes then you know that a lot of the times they're all different sizes and shapes it's it's really weird um but anyway um i made sure to get all of the same little cutout and then i go in with that same faux stain that i made in the project before and i stain all of the boxes um, i don't worry about the inside if if you want to stain the inside, then you can, but for video purposes, I did not. And once I was done painting all of them, then that's what I love about making my own stain. They were ready to glue together. So I just glued four at the top and then um, three down the sides and then two in the middle. And I did hold those together with some clamps and I glued them with some wood glue. Did I say that? I don't know if I said that already, but if I didn't say that, then now you know. <laughs> Next, I go in with my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint, and I just distress the edges as well as the middle. And then once I have all of them distressed, sorry you guys, I know that sometimes my camera doesn't focus right, it gets on my nerves. Um, I try to give you guys a close up, but um, once I had all of the fronts of these distressed, again, I didn't worry about the sides or the bottoms because you're not gonna see that. I then go in with my big sander or it's not my electric sander my um, zip sander and I distress the edges I just thought that it looked really really cool um, kind of exposing that natural wood all the way around the front of the boxes and I, I don't do it like very perfectly because I want it to look natural and then I do the exact same thing on the frame of all the boxes that we glued together so I start off with 
with my white Waverly chalk paint and my mini chip brush and then once I did that I went in and I sanded. I then just put all my drawers back in and you guys it's really coming together once I put all of these I kind of just laid out my label holders and these little itty bitty knobs that I got from Amazon I will put all of these in my Amazon store but I just love the way that it looked when it all came together um, and like I said I laid them all out first to make sure that they were where I wanted them and they were nice and even and then I went in with my drill and I um, screwed down the label holders now you don't have to use a drill for that you can use just a regular screwdriver but you are going to need one of the smaller screwdrivers you can get a set of them at Dollar Tree and then I just go in with some hot glue and I glue all the knobs down Next, I take this sign from Dollar Tree and I use a knife and I just get that sticker off and then I sand that extra residue from the sticker down smooth and then I lay my little box on top of it to the corner. That way I can get, you know, another piece out of this sign if I need to and I take my utility knife and just cut that piece out after I measure it. Now pro tip, I always pick up a ton of signs if I like the size and the shape. I'll pick up quite a few of them any season, it doesn't really matter to me, just to make sure that, that, that I have them when I need them. So I did just want to mention that little uh, trick, which probably isn't a tip or a trick, but it's just what I do and I am never mad at myself when I need it and I have it um, and then I just go in with my bigger zip sander once again and I sand those edges smooth. Once I sand the edges, then I take this ruler. Um, I believe this is called a cutting ruler. You guys, this thing is so awesome. It has like grippies at the bottom. So when you go to cut down the side, it doesn't move on you. But I do make a mark every half inch because I want this to look like faux shiplap. And then I go in with my knife and I just score along all of those lines. I then go back in and just score them a few more times. Now I don't want to cut through this, again I just want to score it and then I go in with my stylus and just kind of scratch out the excess so that way when I paint this you can really tell that there's lines and again it looks like faux shiplap. I then went in with my white Waverly chalk paint and gave it a distress coat of paint once again. Next, I glue right down to my little boxes around that middle part. Now, I do recommend to cut your piece a little bit bigger than I did, just so that way when you go to glue it down, you don't have to try to fight with it to make sure that it's in the middle. Um, but anyway, it all worked out in the end, so no harm, no foul. But I do just go around that sign and reinforce it with some hot glue. I then take this little mini wreath that I believe I got from Hobby Lobby in a pack of two and some random greenery that I have in a bin and I just 
glued that greenery all the way around this wreath and then here in just a minute I'm going to show you guys my bow trick that I have been doing since I came on YouTube two years ago I get questions about it all the time so since I was doing it for this video I did just want to show you guys a slowed down version of how to do it and don't forget that if you need to slow it down any further go in the right hand corner where you see the three dots click that drop down menu and then you can change the speed of the video and you can um, slow it down speed it up it's totally up to you or if you need to rewind and watch it a few times again that's totally up to you as well now i'm not going to try to explain it to you you guys because um it's really hard to explain I can show you better than I can tell you so I'm just gonna let this play and you guys can see how amazing this bow trick is Once I had my bow the way that I liked it, I then went in with my scissors and just cut some simple dovetails to the bottom of the ends of my bow and then I glued it to the top of this wreath and I just laid it right in the middle of this sign or in the middle of these boxes and look how amazing this is you guys. I definitely think this is my favorite project in this video per usual I probably sound like a broken record I can't ever decide I always go back and forth but this is definitely up there with one of my top favorite DIYs I just love it so much and it looks so amazing and you guys 95% of these items are from Dollar Tree items so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of it I just want to thank Jennifer and Detria for the craft supplies. If you guys enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out in my next video, go to the link in the description box in my link tree. And you guys, honestly, I appreciate every single one of you. No matter what way you support me, you don't have to support me monetarily. I appreciate you just as much. Um, there's many ways you can support your favorite creators. You can give this video or any video a big thumbs up. You can subscribe. You can watch the ads, the 30 seconds, click the ads. That's how we get paid. You can share videos. There's so many different ways you can support your favorite creators. And whatever way you support me, I appreciate and love you guys so, so much. Okay, you guys, now this one was super, super simple, but I just love the way that it turned out. Now, I don't think you can ever have enough risers to rise up a candle or whatever the case may be. So I take one of these candle holders from Dollar Tree, and originally I just took my antique wax and tried to distress it. But once I put the galvanized um, bottle cap down, I realized that the white against that galvanized metal didn't look too great so i did just give it a good coat of my truffle waverly chalk paint and then once that chalk paint was dry i went in with my mineral waverly chalk paint and i just distressed it sorry you guys i cannot think of the name of that paint to save my life but it is mineral and i did distress that entire little candle holder with it just to bring out those beautiful details and then I actually glued the bottle cap to the bottom of this I liked the rounded part at the bottom I just thought that it looked really nice that way but you can glue it either way it's a it's totally a personal preference and then just to um, get rid of some of that shine I did just um, dry brush some of that same mineral 
all over the sides as well as the top and then I'm going to show you guys a really cool trick this is another thing I've been doing on my channel for a long time if you just take some Mod Podge and some cinnamon and just lay your Mod Podge down randomly on whatever you want to put faux rust on and then sprinkle the the cinnamon look how amazing that rust looks you guys it looks so realistic you can't even tell it's cinnamon it makes your room smell amazing and i just love the way that this one turned out so let me know in the comments down below would you put the rust on it or would you leave it plain with that galvanized metal look Okay friends, last but not least, we are going to make this sign. So I take two of these beware signs from Dollar Tree. Surprise, surprise that they're from Halloween last year because I told you guys that I stock up when I see the ones that I like. I take the tags off and then I flip it over um, front side up and I take some hot glue down the seam with some large popsicle sticks and I glue the popsicle sticks down to hold this together. I then go in with my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I fill in those holes and then once those were dry then I go in with that same mineral color and I give it a distressed coat of paint. Next, I take this Bless Our Home transfer, and I love that it comes with the O and the wreath and the little flowers that go on top of the wreath. So there's so many different options for this. Now, I did not use the O or the Bless Our, um, but I did use the wreath, the flowers, and the H, M, and E. So I just kind of lay them down on my sign. I mark where I'm going to put the letters, and then I fuzz the crap out of these because when you are using chalk paint underneath of these the transfers really want to stick to it because chalk paint is non-porous so definitely if you're going to use these fuzz 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 until you thought that you have fuzzed enough and then fuzz a little bit more um, but I do start with my black chalk paste for the H the M and the E and then for the wreath I do it in my white paste and in between coats I always dry them with my quick dry tool and then once I had all the letters and the wreath chalked on then I do go back in over top of that wreath with the flowers now yes I know they're flowers but I just wanted to bring that green in and that's the beauty about Chalk Couture. You can use your imagination, use any colors you like and it always turns out amazing but I do just transfer on those little flowers again to bring in that greenery and like I said I will leave all these products that I used in my link tree in the description box. I then go in with my, I believe these are my 3 8 ink, 3 8 inch square dowels. I actually did pretty good not tripping up over my words in this video. So I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back, but I do just frame this out. So per usual, I lay my dowel rods down, I mark it, and then for these dowel rods, you can easily cut them with miter shears. For the bigger ones, it's not so easy. You can still do it, but I do like that I can use my miter shears for the 3 8 inch. And then once I had the frame cut, then I do go in with that same stain that I've used this entire video, and I stain three sides of these. I then go in with my mini finger sander, which is also linked in my Amazon store. And I just sand down all of those edges. I love the effect that this gives. It just looks so cool and so rustic. I love it. I love it so, so much. I usually just use like white chalk paint, but for this, I just tried something different with that box and then um, these dowel rods and I'll definitely be using this technique much more in the future. So I glued it down with some hot glue or frame and I was going to stop there and then I looked at it and of course y'all know I'm extra. So I was like, okay, I have these smaller dowel rods, which are also linked in my Amazon store. I do believe these are quarter inch. Don't quote me. 
Um, I can't remember exactly, but I know that they're much smaller than the 3 8 inch. So I do just cut two pieces for um, above the home and below the home that are one and a half centimeters. Now, you guys, I know not a lot of people use centimeters, but when I was doing it in inches, um, it was some off number. It wasn't like um, a number that I knew. So sometimes if you just use centimeters, then it's exact numbers, if that makes sense. So I did just measure to make sure that I put them in the right spot after I did the exact same thing that I did to the frame. Lord knows if I already said that, but, um, Anyway, I glued those down and look how amazing all of this looks together. Now, I do think that the washboard and the home kind of clashed when I took pictures, but that's okay. I don't know why, you guys, but my vision lately has been to do like vignettes and little displays. I'm really enjoying doing that. Let me know in the comments down below if you like that or would you rather me just do random pieces. Um, it's, it's really up to you guys I can do it either way but I am enjoying doing it this way so I love the way that everything turned out don't forgive don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it subscribe if you haven't already you don't want to miss any giveaways check my last DIY video which is a thrift flip for there's a giveaway in that if you haven't seen that um, and don't forget to share this video with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it. And if nobody has told you guys today, you are absolutely gorgeous, you are worthy, and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Also, don't forget that I am hosting a challenge um, July 19th. It is a subscriber requested. I did post something about it on my community tab. So if you have any requests for me, go on over, leave it in the comments. I will choose from the comments and I will DIY them. And then I will post a video. And it is going to be open like I said so a bunch of different creators will be joining in and there will be a playlist on that day so I hope you guys are as excited as I am and with all that being said I'll catch you guys in the next one bye